In this video, I'm going to be discussing another form of derivation, an alternative to direct derivation. This is called conditional derivation. So let's have an English example first of uh, an argument and a conditional derivation of it. So here's an example argument. We have if Bob is a bird, Bob can fly. If Bob can fly, then Bob is happy. And so if Bob is a bird, then Bob is happy. So we can't do a direct derivation of this, it, because a direct derivation we would just write down if Bob is a bird, Bob can fly, and if Bob can fly, then Bob is happy. And if we're restricting ourselves to the inference rules we have at hand, there's nothing we can do. In particular, we can't do modus ponens. So how might we establish this argument? Well, we would say suppose Bob is a bird, and then we'd say, okay, remember we have this premise, if Bob is a bird, then Bob can fly. So by modus ponens, we can conclude that Bob can fly. And now we have our second premise, if Bob can fly, then Bob is happy. And so we can, uh, again, with modus ponens, conclude that, Bo that Bob is therefore happy. So what have we done? We've supposed that if Bob is a bird and argued to Bob is happy. And so we can conclude that actually, if Bob is a bird, then Bob can fly. So we suppose the antecedent and we argue to the consequent. And when we're done with that, we say, okay, therefore the conditional is true. Is the antecedent, who knows? We supposed it's true and s figured out what follows. We don't know whether or not the antecedent is true, but because we can argue from the antecedent to the consequent, we know that the conditional is true. So what do you do? You suppose the antecedent is true. You show the consequent is true on that supposition, and you conclude the conditional because that's enough for the conditional to be true. So let's go and look at that in the derivation system. So here we have an argument. We'll say our first line will be show conclusion. Now, if we just put in the premises, we would be stuck, just as we were in the English argument. So what we need to do is we need to make an assumption. So we say, ASS for assumption, and then what kind of assumption? If we just say ASS, it says you haven't told us, it, it says incomplete assumption. Why is it incomplete? You haven't said what kind of assumption do you want to make. What we want to make is an assumption for conditional derivation. So assume CD, and that writes down the antecedent. And now we're, we can go ahead and complete our derivation. We can say, oh, look, let's look for inference rule applications. Well, there are conditionals. We've got if P then Q and if Q then R. Can we do modus ponens or modus tollens with either of those? Well, right now we can do modus ponens with if P then Q and P on lines two and three modus ponens. Gives us Q. So we're pretty much done with three and probably with two. We look at line four, we have if Q then R, can we do modus ponens? Well, what do we need? We need Q, and that's what we have on line five. So we can say four and five modus ponens, and we get R. Now, is R the, con the conclusion of our argument? No, the conclusion of the argument is the whole conditional, if P then R. So if we said direct derivation line six, no, it would, wouldn't work. Why? Because line six is not the conclusion. It doesn't match the show line. But, so 6DD will not work, but 6CD will work because 6 is the consequent of the show line. So what we're saying is we've argued from the antecedent to the consequent and therefore the conditional is true. True, excuse me. So if we check, works. It's a uniform derivation. So good. That's a successful uh, conditional derivation. So let's look at another example. Oh, uh, that's not a good example of conditional derivation. Let's look at, oh no, this is, that's what I wanted. Good, okay. So first line is always show conclusion. Now. We're going to make an assumption here, and for reasons that I will explain once we get to chapter three, the assumption always, you can make for each, when can you make an assumption? One time and one time only, and the line immediately after, or where can you make an assumption? On the line immediately after a show line. You can make it whenever you want, because you can always go back and, and in, you can always go back and say, oh, here's a new line and put it in, assume CD, but now, this one's no good because it's 
previous line is not a show line. The only place you can make an assumption is on the previous line, excuse me, is on the line immediately following a show line. That's it. That's all. So it, when you're setting up derivations, maybe you're doing a direct derivation. But if you're not doing a direct derivation, the, you always write show, and then you always make an assumption. And there's always going to be an assumption you can make, so you always want to make an assumption. Assume CD is not the only kind of assumption. If you're trying to show something besides a conditional, you can't make it. You can only assume CD. Assume CD lets you write down the antecedent of the thing you're trying to show. But if the thing you're trying to show is not a conditional, it doesn't have an antecedent, so you can't do it. You can't argue from the antecedent of the conclusion. Excuse me. You can't argue from the antecedent of the conclusion to the consequent of the conclusion, because the conclusion isn't a conditional. Well, in this case it is, and so we can say, yes, let's assume the antecedent. So that's what we've done. So now we'll bring in our premise. And we don't have to say which one because there is only one. Can we do modus ponens with lines 2 and 3? No, because we don't have the antecedent. Can we do modus tollens? Yes, because 3 is the negation of the consequent of line 2. So we can say 2, 3, mt. OK, good. There's our consequent. So we can say, ah, we're done. Line 4, cd. And we can check that. Correct. So those are two examples of conditional derivations in this. That's not where we want to be. Two examples of conditional derivations in the system. So let's just, uh, yeah. This is what we do. We say when you're trying to show a conditional, you can assume the antecedent with assume CD. As I said, assumption must always be on the line immediately following the a show line. And when you get a consequent on, when you get the con if you're trying to show a conditional, and you get the consequent on line n, then to box and cancel, you say n c d. So what does it look like? You're trying to sh what this is what a conditional derivation looks like. You have show the uh, a conditional on line on the second line. You assume the antecedent, the justification being assume c d, and then you argue as you would in a direct derivation by bringing in premises and applying inference rules bringing in premises if there are any, and applying inference rules. And eventually, you get to the consequent. And then on the next line, you say 6cd, and that lets you box and cancel. So uh, always uh, first show line, and then if it's a conditional, always make that assume cd, that assumption. And you always want to be looking to box and cancel, right? Because how do you finish? you box and cancel the initial show line. So you always want to be thinking, what do I need to box and cancel the, the initial show line? If I get the what is on the show line, I can do direct derivation. If it's a conditional and I get the consequent, I can do 6CD. And then I'm done. And you want to be done with the derivation. You want to complete it. So always you want to be thinking about, how do I box and cancel? OK, good. So uh, in the next video, I will discuss the last variety of derivation, what's called indirect derivation.